do some new songs. And um, there is a new song called The Father's House. If you listen to the radio, you've probably heard it. But uh, it'll be a new song today, so I don't expect to hear a lot of voices. So I asked Jason to turn it up so that way I don't hear the silence behind me. <laughs> or just myself singing. Um, but anyway, um, so that's what's happening today. Uh, some announcements that I, I want to bring up. We finally finished our Revelation study, finally, which is a good thing. Uh, we made it all the way to the end, and we're going to take a, take a little bit of a break uh, from Bible study meeting on Thursdays. We'll start back up. I know I told our Bible study group the 8th, but that's the day we leave for the men's retreat, so I won't be there that night. Um, so we'll start up the next week. So we'll actually take a six-week break. So um, my apologies that I didn't pay attention to the calendar. But uh, April 15th will be the start up. And we're going to be studying the book of James. We're going to uh, look, be looking at those five chapters. And uh, some of it's pretty straightforward. Some of it is, is we have to understand the times and things like that. So um, if you want to join us for that Bible study and you want to you know, read the book of James and get ahead of us and, and read it a few times, you're more than welcome to do that as well. So we would... Um, love to have you there. Um, we'd love to have everyone there if you want to come participate uh, in that study. So uh, the Revelation study was was a wonderful study. I think we learned a lot and we grew a lot. Now, you know, when you when when we read it on our own, I think we can understand it a little bit better and some of the things that that were being are being talked about in there. So um, I think it was a beneficial study for all of us. So as well. Um, other things that are coming up, uh, we have a uh, missions meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, correct? Don't want to forget that. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, if you want to um, have some input or be on that, on that committee, we sure would uh, love to have you there at that missions meeting. Uh, Sisterhood has a uh, meeting as well um, on March 14th, the same day as the board meeting. Uh, they'll, they'll meet um, in, another, in another area. And then the sign-up lists for the men's and the women's retreat are up. And if they're not on the bulletin board, on the, on the clipboard. So if you want to sign up for either one of those, obviously men, you'll go to the men's. And women, you'll go to the women's if you want to go. So um, so we'll, uh, those are down on the bulletin boards. And there, those, those are April 8th. The men's is April 8th through the 10th. And the women's is April 29th through the, May 1st. Other than that, I don't have any other announcements. Is there anything I'm missing? Yes, Jen. We have youth group tonight. We're going to pay the kids to come. Okay. <laughs> Can I go? No. <laughs> the, the more, what, what, the more. The more friends they bring, the more cash they more can win. The more money is at stake. Yes, that's right. So as, as the friends grow, the, the cash grows. So. Um, it's going to be fun. They're going to do some challenges tonight. Oh, and if one more thing. We won't be eating anything gross tonight either. No, nothing So that gross. makes it even better. Okay, but we are eating a meal. Though, we are eating as something. Well. So um, we're looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to walking home with a million dollars in my pocket. So. How old do you have to be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything else that I've missed as far as announcements go? All right, will you pray with me? And then uh, we'll, like I said, it's YouTube Sunday, uh, so you worship how you want to worship. If you want to stand, sit, kneel, clap hands, whatever it is, you, you do what you want to do before the Lord. So uh, just don't go all David and dance in your underwear, okay? Please <laughs> refrain from that. Um, but other than that, let's open in a word of prayer. God, I just come to you to thank you for this day and thank you for the time that we have to come together and to worship as a family, Lord. I pray that we would just leave, leave our hearts open and on, on the floor, Lord, that we would just, through all, all aspects of our worship, Lord, that we would um, honor you with what we, what we do, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and to meet and to um, bear with each other and encourage one another and, and to lift each other up, Lord. We just ask that you would uh, be with us now. Father, we do thank you for this time. We thank you for the beautiful weather that we've been having. And we pray that you continue to be with us as we move forward. And help us to continue to be a light in this community. And Lord, just uh, to live for you in everything that we do. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can have a seat. Amen to that song. I love that song. I don't know if you listened to K-Love or anything like that or heard that one on the radio. But man, I heard it 
I don't know, first time a few months ago, and I was like, whoa. So I wanted to sing it in here because it, sometimes we get to that point where where we don't think we can come, come here or we, we don't think we can enter God's presence because we've done something so bad. Um, but that's not true at all. And we have to remember that we're welcome in his presence anytime. So it's just a good reminder for that. Um, and uh, so I wanted to share that with you if you hadn't heard it. And so I hope it, it, was, it, it touched you in some way and um, that God is moving within you. So at this time, we want to do our prayer and our praise uh, request if on the back of the bulletins as our immediate ones. And the newsletters are out today. They, they've been sent or they're back there. Um, you'll, you'll find our full prayer list. And so um, if you have anything you want to add or update or um, that we can be praying about today for you or be praising with you today, we do that now. So, yes, ma'am. Alicia goes to the specialist in Little Rock tomorrow. They don't know for sure exactly what's going on. And her folks will call me as soon as they find out. We do know we have an extra set of hands on a foot. That's all we know right now. Okay. So that's Alicia Poteet. She's going to see a specialist in Little Rock tomorrow. We'll be praying about that. What else is there? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my dad is going uh, for the results of his biopsy tomorrow morning. Uh, so just prayers for answers. He's, he's been suffering for a long time and just that um, they would get it figured out and we could get it fixed. That is Jonathan Chapman. We're, we've been praying for him about uh, his, his uh, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, his health concerns, uh, well, well, we won't bear that, but uh, he had a biopsy on some part of his body that I can't remember at this moment. I'm sorry, Jen. Um, but he, he uh, is waiting those results, and he gets those answers tomorrow, so we'll, we'll be praying about that definitely. So, What else is there? Yes, ma'am. Then Stella Anderson, her brother, is not doing very well um, as of Friday. I thought maybe he, he wasn't going to last very much longer. So she was in some turmoil. So I would just say we need to pray for that family. Stella, she was a Scot, so Stella Anderson. Uh, um, so Stella Anderson's brother is not doing well. Yeah. Okay. I believe his name. David is his name, she believes. So. We're praying for them and that family. So, Anything else? Yes, sir. Well, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it was Thursday or Friday, but Ted Bolts had a heart attack, and he had to have three stents put in. So it was pretty extensive heart attack, and uh, just pray for him and his family for recovery for him. Uh, it's a good thing his son is here helping run the business for him so that 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 can continue on, and you know he's just been blessed that way. But you know, he, I heard he was kind of honoring the hospital, which doesn't surprise me. So that's Ted Fultz had a heart attack, and we we're going to pray for his recovery. Yeah. Yep. And then Juanita had her test results, or went to see the second doctor, and and verified the, what the first doctor had said, basically. So they're going to up her medicine and. Deal with the pain issue for right now, and they're hoping that will take care of her problems for a while. Juanita Deck, if you don't know, Juanita Deck went over to uh, Spokane and got a second opinion on some of her foot pain that she's been having and leg pain, and the doctor confirmed what what is going on, but they're going to up her pain medicine so she can <coughs> help regulate that better. So, and she should be back Monday, tomorrow, or That's right. I think tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's tomorrow. Yeah. So, be praying for their travels as well. She went over there with her uh, daughter and son-in-law, so. Is there anything else? Jerry. Their brother passed away yesterday. David. David. Um, Jerry Robo's brother passed away. Um, David is his name, David Robo, um, and his family. Family, okay. Pray for his family. Anything else? I'm glad to see your dad here. 
Yeah. It's nice to see you. Um, I went um, on Wednesday to, to my mom's appointment with her, and uh, she's been feeling really well uh, here lately for the last couple of weeks. I've been on her about eating and drinking and keeping her energy up, so that's helped. Um, but the doctor pretty much confirmed that the tumor is not going to stop growing no matter what they do. Um, and the treatments are not working. Um, while well, the treatments are making her sick, um, and so her quality of life is not going to be good in these last days. And so we're, we're trying one more treatment. That, and the doctor is basically like, if it doesn't make you feel better, or if it doesn't, if it, if it puts you down for two, three weeks like the other ones have had, then that's not a quality of life that we want you to have in your last days. And so she'll stop treatment and then. You know, she's got a window that the doctors are predicting, so um, it's a very short window. So um, just be praying for her and um, just our family. So out, outside of God doing a miracle in her, um, there's, she's going to pass away within the year. So, um, so anyway, be praying for our family. Anything else? Is Laura Heisman really in the hospital? Yes. I was going to mention that as well. Um, his so the last last thing I heard from Nancy was um, his sweet syndrome has been acting up quite a bit, and he's lost like thirty five pounds. But they're testing him again, I think, this week for leukemia because um, he's showing symptoms of, of leukemia, um, and that's the that's all I know. Um, I don't. He's doing. I mean. He's doing the best he can with that nerve, the nerve issues with the sweets or whatever it is, but he's not, not feeling well. So be praying for Merle and Nancy. Uh, they're, they're having a rough medical time right now. Is she doing better? I believe so. Uh, she, she didn't indicate like she was bad or anything, so she just was asking us to pray for Merle, and we were asking some details, and so that's kind of what we got. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Um, we just found out this weekend that uh, one of our freshmen, his name is CJ Griffin, is at the Kalispell Children's Hospital. And I think they're still running tests. They don't know what has happened, but he's like, from what I understand, has like lost some of his mobility, his arms and legs. So um, it's really unknown right now. They're running a lot of tests on him still. So. Okay. Be praying for that family, the Griffin family, and CJ. Yeah, absolutely. C.J. Griffin, um, if you didn't hear her, C.J. Griffin is at the Children's Hospital over in Kalispell uh, running some tests on him because he's not feeling well. Any others? All right, will you pray with me? Lord God, Heaven, Father, I just come to you to, again to thank you for this time that we have to, to worship, Father, and to, to bear each other's burdens and um, our prayers. Father, that, that we lay out before each other to, to be prayed about. And we ask, Father, that as we remember the, these, these people throughout the week, Father, that we would um, bring them before you. And, Father, for we ask that you be at Alicia. She has a, a, an appointment tomorrow with a specialist. And we don't really know what's going on as far as um, what they're going to say. So, Lord, I pray that you'd be with them. Um, be, we, be with that pregnancy. Lord, be, be, be in that midst, Lord. That's, that's a difficult situation to, to navigate as for us humans. But, Lord, you, you know the outcome and you know what, what's best. And so we pray for, for you, to, you to continue to be good in that situation, Lord. Uh, Father, we just ask that you would continue to be with Jonathan as he is awaiting results uh, from his biopsy, Lord. Um, we ask that you, again, for answers in his life so that way... Father, if there's a, a need for a treatment, Father, that you would treat him, um, Lord. But if you if you want to heal him, we ask that you would heal him, Lord, if that's in your will. Um, so we pray, Father, for that situation as well. We uh, always want to remember Teddy as well, Father, um, from that family, Lord. Is, is they're still kind of navigating the, what's going on with him and his liver, Lord. We just lift him up to you as well. Pray that you protect that little boy. Father, we want to pray for... Uh, David, um, as he is uh, not doing well, Lord, we ask that you would be with that family and be with Stella, Lord, as, as that's a difficult situation as well, Lord. Um, 
Father, we're thankful for um, how far medicine has come with with heart attacks and things like that. And so, Lord, we, we're, we're thankful that, that Ted was able to get to, to the hospital in time and, and, Lord, that you were able to direct the doctor's hands. And so thank you for that. And thank you for the community that he has um, been been involved with here and uh, allowed us to have an auto parts business here in town, Lord. And that's been very useful to a lot of people. So thank you for that. Father, we pray for, for his recovery. And uh, we pray that you would get him back to, to health and and uh, just pray for that family as well. Lord, we're, we're thankful to hear about the results from Juanita, uh, that you would uh, also help her to, to have that pain reduced that she, she has, Lord. And we're thankful that for the second opinion that has, has kind of led, led to that decision. And we, we, lift, we lift her up to you and ask that you would uh, heal, her, heal her leg or, or at least reduce the pain, Lord. But, Father, we know that it is your will that is going to be accomplished. We pray for that to happen. Father, we pray for the Robo family, and we pray for David Robo's family as well, as, as he's passed away, Lord. And we ask that you would just comfort them and comfort, comfort that family. Father, we, we want to ask that you would continue to be with Merle as he's battling health concerns and health issues. And, and for Nancy as well, as she's having to run him back and forth, doctors and things like that, Lord, it's... It gets tiring and taxing on, on your on your mental state and your emotional state, Lord. So I ask that you would be with them and help them to, to get through this, Lord. Father, I want to lift up CJ to you as, as he has got some health issues as well, Lord. We don't quite know what they are. So, Father, we, we lift them up to you. And we lift that family up to you as well because, again, Lord, all that stuff is hard. And, Lord, we do thank you for um, the access to medicine that we have. And so we just ask that you continue to be with them and be with those doctors and as they as they figure it out and what's going on, Lord. And again, Lord, our, our selfishness is to ask for a complete healing in his life. And but Lord, what, whatever your will is for his life, I pray that you would accomplish that um, even through this, Lord, because you love us as humans and, and you want us to be a part of your life and uh, a part of your world, Lord. And thank you for those invitations to your table through Jesus. And, we do thank you for Jesus. We thank you for loving us through the cross. We thank you for showing us the way to eternal life through your son's resurrection, Lord. And, and we just thank you for um, this season that we're in of Easter and to think about those things. And Lord, we just pray that you would just be with us now. It's in Jesus' precious holy name that I pray. Amen. Matthew 5, 27 says this, Surely he was the Son of God. In our daily bread, I want to read an article from there. And it begins like this, God at work. God is crying. Those are the words whispered by Bill Haley's 10-year-old daughter as she stood in the rain with a group of malevolent believers in Jesus. They had come to Virginia's Shenandoah Valley to seek God and make sense of a legacy of Rachel racial discord in America. As they stood on the grounds where former slaves were burned, they joined hands of prayer. Then suddenly, the winds began to blow, and it started to rain. As the leader called out for racial healing, the rains began to fall even harder. Those gathered believed that God was at work to bring reconciliation and forgiveness. And so it was at Calvary. God was at work. After the crucified Jesus breathed his last, the earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open, Matthew 27, 51, and 52. Though some had denied Jesus was, a centurion assigned a guardian had come to a different conclusion. When the centurion and those with him saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and explained, surely he was the Son of God. In the death of Jesus, God was at work providing forgiveness of sin for all who believed in him. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Sometimes we forget that God so loved us and so wants us to be with him. He sent his only begotten son here to die. That's what it was truly about. God wants us 
to be with him in heaven. And he knew the only way that would ever be accomplished was through the death of Jesus Christ to be able to take those sins from us. We have such a loving Father that he was willing to give everything for us. Are we willing to give the same back to him? Is that why we have accepted Jesus our Lord and Savior? And why we come to this communion table every Sunday to really recognize and know what God did for us and what Jesus has done. I hope each and every one of us truly in our hearts looks and understands the great sacrifice that not only Jesus gave, but that God himself gave to send his son here to take those sins. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, sometimes it's overwhelming to think how much you love us, how much you care. You sent your son here to die for me, to take my sins, to give me that way to you, because you want me to be with you so much. You want all of us to be there. Father, as we partake of these emblems, they mean so much to us because we know what truly occurred and what has happened. Your love was made evident that day when you allowed Jesus to die upon that cross. Father, as we partake of these emblems, we so love you that we will never forget what our Lord and our Savior has done to die upon that cross for each and every one of us. As we partake this day, we are so thankful for all that has been done. It's in your name I pray. Amen. And the emblems are in the front and the back. And when you feel led to partake, we invite each one of you to do so. We are starting
five week series called Holy Week. And uh, we're going to be looking at the events leading up to the crucifixion and the resurrection. And uh, the in your Bibles, in the Gospels, most of the crucifixion, the Holy Week, is, is chronicled in all of them. And you can read in any, any one of the four Gospels about the, the Holy Week that, that leads up to it. And, uh, and so, we're going to be looking at today from John chapter 12, if you looked in your bulletins. John chapter 12, verse 12 through 19. And uh, the reason I picked this, this event, this triumphal entry, obviously the, the proclamation of the, the king of Israel, the return of the king, um, is, is an exciting thing. And it's, it's covered in all four of the Gospels. And the reason I picked this one is because when I was reading all four of them, this one, there was something about this one that stood out to me. And that's what we're going to talk about. The, there's like the crowd of people that are here, okay? And we're going to be looking at the crowd because I, I'm trying to look at the Holy Week from if I was there, the standpoint if I was there, standing uh, in Jerusalem while this was all going on, what would kind of, how would I be, right? And so in this account, there's, there's kind of this three different aspects to this crowd, okay? And we're going to be looking at those and we're going to be talking about kind of what each one meant and possibly where, where we think we might have been. And so from, for, from the beginning of this, um, you know, we look at, we try to go back and keep everything in context, okay? And in John, show, John chapter 12, verse 1, um, talks about, it's, it's Friday evening and Jesus is up in Bethany, okay? And this is the event where Mary comes and she washes Jesus' feet with expensive perfume. Um, this is the place where the religious leaders are ramping up their plans to kill Jesus in Bethany. Um... And they also want to go and kill a guy that's already died, okay? They want to kill Lazarus, okay? And why do they want to kill him? Because Jesus raised him from the dead, and he wouldn't stop talking about it, okay? Um, you, you think, it's like, well, if he raised from the dead once, can he do it again? You know, but, but these religious leaders were so, I always picture them like a rabid dog, you know? They're frothing its mouth, and they're kind of like so mad and incensed that, you know, spits flying out of their face and stuff. And, uh, but the reason that they wanted to do that, if you look in verse 11, it says why they wanted to do that. For on account of him, Lazarus, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. They were, they were ticked off that the Jews were leaving them. It was a jealousy thing, right? Now, on the Sunday... Before the, the resurrection, uh, it's, it's a week. And Jesus is at a high point, okay? The crowds were just enormous. And, and especially this, this one was a little bit different. This, uh, this thing in Jerusalem was a little bit different, okay? The nation was looking for a Messiah, all right? The one that they thought would release them from the slavery of Rome. And it was going to take a powerful person to do this. And having just raised Lazarus from the dead, more and more people were gravitating towards Jesus. And so this movement was growing more and more. And as it was building this triumph entry, I'm sure there was buzz that Jesus was this Messiah. That was He can raise people from the dead. Surely he can topple Rome, right? Surely he can eliminate it. But we're going to be looking at the motivations of these crowd members. And we're going to be looking at their hearts. And the thing I want you to begin to look at at yourself is that what is our motivation to be with Jesus? What is our motivation to, to follow Jesus? And so we're going to look at some of the right reasons and some of the wrong reasons that people were following Jesus. So let's pray, and then we'll dive into the scripture, and uh, we'll talk about it a little bit.
God, I just come to you to, again to thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I pray, Father, for you to speak. Lord, use me as an instrument to communicate your word and your gospel, Lord. I pray that there would be your words and not mine that, that we hear. Father, move me out of the way and speak, us, speak to us this day. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we're in chapter 12, verse 12 through 16 is what we're going to be looking at today. Well, 12 through 19. Let's read it in its entirety and then we'll look at the different sections. The next day the crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him, and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given their this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Now this first crowd, is, is we find them in verses 12 through 16, okay? And they're, and they're there for the right reasons. They come to worship the king. Now, mind you, it might not be the king that they think, okay? Because the scene is unfolding. Remember, they just heard about Lazarus' death. The feast was going on. The Passover time was, was bustling, okay? And Jerusalem was phenomenally large at this time, okay? So the Jewish historians placed the population of Jerusalem... Anywhere from 25,000 to 500,000 people. I know that's a big gap, but they kind of make it so that it, that it is this window of this bustling um, metropolis, so to say, Jerusalem was, okay? And we think, well, 25,000 is not a lot of people, right, if, if we go on the low end. But you got to think about all the small little towns around there, okay? They were, they were lucky if they had 500 people in their towns, okay, it spread up all over the place, all right? So if there was a big city, 25,000 to, to 100,000 to 500,000, Jerusalem was the city to be in. It would be like, I know I speak my crazy mind sometimes, but it'd be like L.A., all right? Like how everybody wanted to move to L.A. at one point, okay? I know. I know it's terrible. I don't, I don't like L.A. either. But, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? Uh, where, in my neck of the woods where I come from, Chicago. If you wanted to move to the big city, you'd move to Chicago. I mean, you could walk to everything. And it was, I'm not a big city guy, okay? But that's what Jerusalem was, okay? And, and particularly during this, this uh, Passover time, and with Jesus, the rumblings of Jesus, the, the historian Josephus records that this population might have been around 2.7 million people in the city, okay? That's a lot of people. For this little town. Okay? But the reason that they were there was because it was a different kind of Passover because Jesus had been going around for the last three years and they were excited about the prospect of Jesus being the guy. Okay? And so they wanted to be where he was at and, and the rumblings of Jesus traveled by word of mouth very quickly. Okay? And it had spread over the whole world. So this Passover was a little different than it normally was. And so when the people saw Jesus coming down the path, they took these branches of palms and, and, and laid them out on the road here in John 12. Now, they, now in Mark, they took their coats and they were throwing their coats out on the road as well, right? And these, and these people, these people that were in the crowd, they, they were there to worship the king. But they didn't recognize that Jesus was something special. Okay, they, they missed a very crucial point, which which John here kind of points out. Now, some of the other Gospels talk about the, the disciples going and securing the donkey, right? You, you guys have read some of that, okay? Well, this one excludes that. This Gospel, John's Gospel account, excludes that account where they go and anti the donkey and they're like, tell him that the Lord needs it and all that stuff, okay? He excludes all that stuff, but he focuses in on the prophecy that is about Jesus, all right, this prophecy was shared in the book of Zechariah, 
And it talks about the king coming riding in on a donkey. Now remember the images of kings coming in, war kings coming in, right? What would they, they, would they be coming in on a lowly donkey? No, they wouldn't. They'd come in on these mighty steeds, um, you know, showing their power and their dominance, right? Well, Jesus does not come in that way. But, they, but the crowd that is here sees him, and they start chanting Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. You know, they're sending the message that Jesus is this one that is going to come and save them. Because that's what Hosanna means. Oh, save us, okay? And they were longing for a Savior. They were longing for this Messiah. They were longing for someone to come along and deliver them from this oppression of slavery that they were being held captive by the Roman government, okay? And so they, they, they begin to ask themselves, they begin to look to Jesus to, to release them from this bondage, okay? And so that's, that's where we begin to ask ourselves, what about us? When, when I was a part of the crowd, and I say that as I, I mean before we knew Jesus, right? Were we looking for Jesus to deliver us from something? Were we looking for Jesus to, to take the bad out of our life? Do we look to Jesus as the one who has the power to deliver us? You know, do we, do we expect Jesus to, to be a miracle worker in our lives? But you see, when we chant Hosanna, we're asking the Lord to save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. They're shouting this. And, and these in the crowd, we, we, we know that those in the crowd, they were there to worship because they were crying out for Jesus to save them. Now again, mind you, their, their point of, of shouting this was to deliver them from the tyranny of Rome. But they were there to worship the King of Israel. They were there to worship the king, and they, and they were chanting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So they're giving the Lord credit as well. And this crowd is acknowledging that very fact, that Jesus is sent from God. And they're waiting for this Messiah. And, and they want him to come. The actual quote, the Hosanna, comes from Psalm 118. And you see, the phrase is very theologically significant, because this tells us those in the crowd understood what was going on, but they didn't understand it fully. Okay? They didn't know quite who Jesus was because they'd been led astray their whole life. They'd been, they'd been mis misrepresented by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They'd been told stories that they'd never heard on their own. But we have to remember what Jesus says, that when you know me, you know the Father. And they're crying out to Jesus to save them. They're acknowledging Jesus is sent from God. They're, they're calling him the king of Israel. You see, but they don't fully understand what Jesus is. Like I said, they expect him to release them from the tyranny of Rome. But he's not the mighty warrior king that they expect. He's not coming riding in on a steed uh, plated with armor. He's coming riding in on a lowly donkey. And I know for a fact that those Romans that were standing there were laughing. I know that they were, they were standing there laughing at this man coming in claiming to be king. And they're like, <laughs> he's on a donkey. <laughs> right? And this donkey is showing us that he's a man of peace, not a, a man of war. He, he, he's going to lead a spiritual kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. This prophecy that, that John shares with us comes from Zechariah 9 9. And the crowd came to worship Jesus, but they didn't understand fully. And for us, I know that happens with us sometimes. When we don't, when we're in the crowd, we don't know Jesus. And we come to Jesus where we're, we, we, we want Jesus to save us, but we don't fully understand what Jesus has to offer us. We don't fully understand what Jesus is doing sometimes in our lives until we fully submit to him. You see, they wouldn't understand things until he rose from the dead. But that's coming. It has not happened yet. Think about it like this. 
I know we don't outright call for Jesus' crucifixion. But when we choose not to say that he's Lord of our lives, we choose not to worship him, we choose not to live for him, we in a sense are doing a very similar thing. You see, when we sometimes suppress the calling to, to tell our friends about Christ, when we don't listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit for us to reach out to the hurting, we in a sense are denying the power that Jesus has. We are in a sense denying the resurrected Jesus in our lives. And we find ourselves, me included, maybe chanting in the crowd to crucify him. But you see, I'm thankful for the grace and forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I deny that power, when I find myself too busy to be bothered by such things, I would encourage you, church, yeah, we're standing there chanting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, but do you understand that these people who were chanting that were probably also the ones in the crowd chanting, crucify him as well a week later? Well, not even a week later, five days later. You see, I'm thankful that we have the work of the Lord Jesus in our lives. I'm thankful for his grace and his forgiveness. And I know he's not finished with me yet. And when I find myself too busy to be bothered by such things, sometimes I, I deny the power that the Holy Spirit has in my life. And I turn on him. And I forget who he is, that he's a prince of peace, not a prince of war and of power. The second thing that we look at is some came to... Some came to get something from the king. John 12, 17 and 18, if you remember, it says, Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb, raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Verse 18, many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. When we look at what John's reason is for, for the many being there, they would heard about Jesus raising him from Lazarus from the dead. They witnessed this awe-inspiring event, and they wanted to see more of it. They possibly wanted Jesus to do that in their lives. And they wanted something from Jesus. They didn't want to be there for the reason he was there. You see, what we can see from these people that are, are so awe-inspired by this, what Jesus had done, they wanted that. Uh, because that's what happened when Jesus did miracles a lot. The result was that people began to follow him. And they were there to see a show or to get close to Jesus so that way they could get something from him. They fought to Jesus because of what he had done. But their enthusiasm was very short-lived and their commitment was very shallow. Even for the ones who were there to worship the king of Israel, like I said, they were probably there chanting crucify him five days later. Because they were suffering. They were, they were, they were part of the crowd. And can I tell you, there's people still today that come to Jesus with a very shallow commitment or the short-lived enthusiasm. Jesus even speaks about the seed falling on the soils and exactly how it happens. A lot of times we cry out to Jesus for what reason? Oh, Jesus, help me in this. You see, if we want Jesus to save us from our sin and to give us eternal life, that's the most wonderful thing that we can ask of him. But when we simply come to Jesus looking for him to be a well-wisher or a genie in a bottle, we're missing what Jesus wants to do for us. Jesus wants a relationship with all of us. And he wants it to grow. And he wants it to be different. And he wants us to, to act differently than the world acts. He wants us to live differently than the world lives. He wants us to think differently than the world thinks. And he wants us to treat people differently than the world does. Sitting in church does not automatically guarantee us a spot, a life-changing relationship with Jesus. It doesn't automatically guarantee us a spot in heaven. You see, the commitment that we make to Jesus has to grow over time, and it begins to mold us and shape us and change us. Maybe you came to Jesus because you needed him to, to do something in your life, to heal you of an ailment, and you thought, man, that was great. Maybe, maybe this Jesus thing is real. 
But these in the crowd were looking for something for Jesus. They didn't want a commitment for their lives. So ask yourself, why did you come to Jesus? Are you looking for something from him? Are you looking for a, a, a genie in a bottle? Or are you looking for someone who saves you from a life of sin? And we can commit our lives to him and to follow him and to begin to let him mold us and change us and shape us so that we're different from the world. The third group of people that were there was in verse 19. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Even the enemies of Jesus were there that, that were opposed to Jesus. They were there in the crowd as well. They come to oppose the king. You see, these religious leaders were there because they had enough of Jesus. They were ready to kill him. And they were ready to take the attention off of him because it was stealing their attention. You see, the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him, and they just could not have that. And as the Pharisees are observing this crowd, you know, that, that froth is getting more and more at the sides of their mouth because they're getting more angry and angry and angry. See, Jesus, are, Jesus followers are not just the people from Galilee. They're from all over the world. They're for the Passover, and these people are amazed at Jesus, and they're seeing this. And these religious leaders wanted nothing to do with this Messiah. Because they're the ones who pushed that agenda of the military warrior. They wanted their territory, their, their land back. They wanted to be on top of things no matter the cost. Because they wanted to maintain that power, the money, and the control of the people that, that they had. And they were opposing Jesus at any cost. I mean... Look at it. He just raised Lazarus from the dead, and they were mad because Lazarus was talking about it, and they wanted to kill Lazarus again. How nonsensical did it, did it become? They were so irrational that they, they couldn't even see past the ends of their noses. They wanted nothing to do with this Jesus. You see, when we do not continue in Jesus' teachings, or with the teachings of God, we start to to go our own way. And these religious leaders were no longer following what God had taught them, what, they, what their predecessors had taught them. These religious leaders were religious and title only. They were, in truth, godless men. Even though they represented God, they only wanted the power and the control. They wanted Israel to be the king of the world. They wanted Israel to be back on top. And their Messiah was going to deliver that. This lowly prince of peace that came riding on a donkey was not the guy they were looking for. You see, he's not the king of war. He's the prince of peace. And they would have recognized all of this. And they wanted nothing to do with this Jesus. You see, those in the crowd were there during this event. They were there worshiping the king. Maybe they, they wanted something from the king, or they were there to oppose the king. So I ask you this question, who would you be? Who are you today? My prayer is that we would be the ones there to worship the king, the son of God, the prince of peace. Maybe we don't understand all there is to know about Jesus, and I don't believe we will until we see him face to face. But understand this, we're there to worship the king. That's my prayer for me, that's my prayer for you as well. That we're not there to, to look to Jesus as a genie in the bottle. That we're not there just, just here because our friends are here. Or our wives or our, our significant others are here. I pray that you're here to worship the king. That's my prayer for me and my prayer for you as well. Let me pray. God, I just come to you to thank you for this day, and thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house with your people, Lord, that you would encourage us, Lord, to, to worship you. Father, that we would that we'd cry out, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Father, I, I've been at this a very long time, and I still don't understand all aspects about you. 
how, how you can be so loving and forgiving to me when I fail so many times. It's just, it's hard for me to rational that sometimes, Lord. But I thank you for that. Father, I'm here to worship. And I pray that for, for these, the, this church as well, Lord. The, Lord, we would come to you to worship no matter what. That we would cry out with all that we are. Hosanna. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for offering, offering yourself on the cross. Lord, you are more than I've ever imagined in my life. Lord, you've been there for me through thick and thin, and I thank you for that. Father, you've been there when I doubt myself. You've been there for me when I, when I forget sometimes who, whose I am. And Lord, you've forgiven me and accept my repentance, Lord. I thank you for that. Father, I pray that you'd be with our church, Lord, that, that as we would come to grips with who we would be in the crowd to this day, that, Father, we'd find comfort with where we stand. But, Father, if we're, if we're in the uncomfortable spot of, of not being there for the right reasons, Lord, I pray that you would begin to work on our hearts and lead us back Father, help us to repent of it, that we don't ever go that way again. Lord, we thank you so much for, for loving us so much that you came and showed us what it is to be free from sin on the cross. Thank you for paving the way to eternal life through your resurrection, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As always, if you want to have a conversation about this at, at any point, I'm available. About who Jesus is in your life, maybe, maybe where you stand with Jesus in the crowd this day. If you want to have that conversation at some point, come find me. We'll, we'll talk about it. But other than that, have a great week, church. Enjoy your weeks. and Love God and love others. Have a great week.